Hello, this is a tutorial for AutoCAD covering plotting. Um, plotting from AutoCAD. So we've got a design base here ready to plot. Uh, the question is, is um, what are the next steps in order to be able to get it to plot? So I'm going to get, first of all, out of my uh, model space to my paper space. So there's a little tag down here at the bottom. It says layout. It might say paper. It's the same thing. So there might also be tabs right next to each other on a PC. You'll see several tabs. You can just pick which one you want. In this case, I know I've already created my layout. It's on layout one. So you should already have one already set up like this. So one thing you'll notice real quick before we get started with actually plotting is that I've drawn all my layers on with different colors. And those colors actually correspond to something which is called pen styles. So now here you can, you can see that you can control line weights in your properties and in your layers, but we actually want to do it, instead of doing it individually every time, we want to have a called a master file or a template file that will assign pen styles for this particular sheet. And the nice thing about that is that we actually may want different pen styles for different sheet settings for a draft or for a large or small format or something like that. So we're going to look at how to do that and I'll show you where those are when you go to plot. If you were to check it for a Mac, if you check your edit your page setup, you'll see that it says plot style table. So it gives you a list. There's a drop down down in here, and I've got the one that I want already loaded. So we're going to look at how um, where how to load them and what that means. So I'm going to open up a file real quick that will give us a little bit of um, a little bit of help. So if I look at that's my file path. If we look at, uh, which we will look at in just a second, if you can compare the two, you can see that once we've loaded our pen styles, it will actually assign line weight values or color values, grayscale values, to these different colors. So these may look arbitrary, but in this case, the yellow represents a slightly thicker edge than the red. So we've got concrete, planter, we've got the green representing a hatch, we've got a nice light gray representing a score line, a nice thin light gray. Again, something thicker representing a built element that rises up above, this would be a seat wall, and we've got a tree, again, something that sits above our ground plane. So this is a sidewalk with some seat walls and a planter area. And you'll notice over here, this is what it's gonna look like. So you can see that there's a difference. It's subtle, but it's a, uh, there is a hierarchical value to um, these different pen settings. So this is actually, um, so here they are. What we're going to do is go ahead and load those now. And uh, this is the file. It's called CTB. So this is the file we'll be using for this example. And the CTB um, is a plot styles uh, file. And it remembers these pen weight settings. So we won't have to load it every time. We'll load it one time. So there's a couple different things we can do. We have to know where to put this file. So AutoCAD references it in a certain place for a Macintosh. I'll open up this file, tell you where it is. So it's going to go into my library, application support, Autodesk, um, et cetera, et cetera. So if you have more than one version of CAD, you want to double check and make sure it's going into the right version. And then ENU and plotters. So plotters, um, because a plotters is another name for printer. So it's going to be slightly different for the PC. I'm going to look at both of those. I'm not going to spend a lot of time <clears throat> talking about the differences. As you can see here, so users, your username, instead uh, you'll be looking at your app data folder. And sometimes that's a hidden folder. So if you can't find that folder, you need to go Google how do you find your app data folder? How do you reveal it? Because it's there, you just might not be able to see it. They don't want you to access it sometimes because they don't want you to mess up things. So by default, it may be hidden. So same thing, roaming, Autodesk, AutoCAD, this is the version of AutoCAD that you're using. And again, that's, uh, this is dependent on the version. And plotters and plot styles. So you'll see the plot styles folder in the plotter folder, um, in the plotters folder. So if I were to find mine, um, I've, got, I've actually got that folder open. So if I browse to that folder, I go into my username, my library, application support, Autodesk, Roaming, AutoCAD 2014, and then that's the only folder that's in there that makes it easy. Uno, uh, or Enu, Plotters, and of course there's my Plot Styles folder. So these are the ones that when you go to plot, these are your default plot styles. You can see the one I've got selected here is the one that I've added. So all you have to do is just drag and drop, just drag and drop your, your, your CTB from the, from the folder into that folder. And once it's in there, it'll automatically show up in AutoCAD. You don't have to do anything else to load it. Um, and if you're not sure 
if you're looking where I'm telling you and it's not help it's not getting you there you can go into your options and you can go into application and you can go down to um, printer support file path open that up it's going to ask you for the printer configuration search path and again this will just tell you where um, this will give you lead you to that folder so PC looks a little bit different but for a Mac if you can't if I'm telling you to go somewhere and it's not the same on your machine you can go find out exactly where that is for yourself so go there figure out where that folder is drop that CTV file in and then it'll show up in your plot screen so once we've done that we can now go ahead and and print or plot in this case you'll notice that I actually have two viewports I've created another one one of them has my aerial and one of them has my um, my line work in it. I've done that well first of all just by copying my viewport I can just copy it and it'll, it'll make a duplicate and in order to toggle a certain layer on and off you'll notice that if I wanted to toggle if I had my um, I'll give you an example I'll turn all my layers on you'll notice that I actually want to print this without the aerial but I want to print this one without the lines you can do that by going by going into your viewport and then in your layers panel here on the right you'll see that there's there's this little icon that says VP freeze it stands for viewport freeze and it looks like a little square with a with a snowflake so what that does is it allows you to freeze lines inside of your viewport so it's actually specific to the viewport so if I froze something, a layer in this viewport, it would still show up in my other one. So in this case, what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to go ahead and freeze my, I'm going to viewport freeze my image, and you'll notice in that case it, it actually freezes in just the one. Now, the, if you didn't do that and you went and did it the traditional way by just turning the layer on and off, you'll notice it actually turns off in both. So now that's handy because what I'm doing is, is when I'm setting these viewports up, I'm actually making it so that um, when I edit them I can come back to them and, and I will replot later. So now another way to do that would be of course to do one plot to turn all, all your layers on, um, do one plot and then of course turn all your layers off except for the aerial layer or your image layer. Uh, the challenge with that is let's say you mess up and you have to go back and do it again or something changes well you'll have to go back and turn all those layers on and off again. So in this case what we're doing is we um, well, only have to do it one time and we're all set to go. So what I'm going to do is plot, I'm going to go ahead and plot my line work first. I'm going to type in the word plot. It's going to open up this little dialog box. It's already on the right size. I've done this before. It's telling me what size I want. Now don't worry about your printer. Um, you can just use whatever default printer that you have. If you have a printer that you've used or if you have um, um, a PDF printer, just you know, select whatever your default is. Or, or if you wanted to add a printer, you can always add a printer here. Now in this case, uh, if you do not have these all of these page sizes as with your plotter, because some plotters have them or some don't, you can actually go in and go down to right here where it says manage custom sizes. So if you wanted to, you can actually create a new size. You can tell it how big you wanted it to be, um, and then you can save it. So I'm just going to hit cancel uh, because luckily the, the printer driver that I use actually has um, the size that I want, which is architecture D. It's going to be just a little bit bigger than we actually need, but that's okay. So now I could say I want to print the layout, or I could say I want to print the extents or the display, but the problem with that is now I've actually created two viewports in my, um, in my layout. So I actually want to tell it which viewport I want to, to print. I'm going to select Window instead of Layout. And I'm going to go ahead and Window. And I'm going to go ahead and Window um, just my CAD line work first. Now for a Mac, it's a little bit different. PC shows you all the options in one dialog box. If you actually, um, if I open this up here, you'll see that a PC will show you everything all at once. Now that's actually really convenient. I wish the Mac did that. It doesn't. Um, so in this case, you can see that you have. Um, so go ahead and get familiar with all the ones that are selected here. Of course, the one that we're going to look at is not selected. It's up here at the top, and it's the plot styles. So be aware of where that is on a PC. On a Mac, what we're going to do is actually go into Edit Page Setup. You actually have to go into that window and you'll notice a couple things. There's only two things that we're really interested in this, which is right here at the top right, plot style table. We want to select, we want to select from our drop-down, and if we copied our CTB in the right folder, it will show up. So we want to go ahead and select the one that we've dropped into that folder. We want to make sure that it says print with the plot styles. It should be on by default. 
And then the only other thing I want to do is I'm just going to center the page. It's not necessary, but sometimes when you're when you have an image a page size that's too large for your viewport, it shifts everything off to the side. In this case, I just want to center it. And that's it. Make sure you do not say fit to paper. Obviously, we want to keep the scale that we've already created. I'm going to hit OK. That's it. Everything's done. So before I do anything, um, in this case, I can say save to PDF. Now, if you have a um, if you're on a PC, you don't have the built-in PDF like a Mac does. So for a PC, you will actually um, it is going to be dependent on the plotter that you've selected. So you actually want to make sure that you've selected um, either the Autodesk, uh, the Adobe PDF printer, which is if you have Acrobat Pro, it'll it'll automatically load. Uh, or you can try the the DWG to PDF exporter. Now that should work too. Um, some of them you might have troubles with. There's some differences, but we won't get into that. So just kind of use the one you have and kind of keep a note of anything that just doesn't look right. So in this case, you can see center the plot. What to plot? We're going to plot window instead of extents. Scale, we want to make sure that we're one to one. And of course, we want to make sure we've selected our CTB file. Um, and of course, we want to make sure that we're printing to PDF. So again, that, that, that driver varies, so I can't tell you which one to use. Use anything that can get you um, to a PDF. In this case, with a Mac, it's just built in. I'm just going to say Save as PDF. And then it's going to give me an option. I'm going to call this just my CAD line work. Because remember, I'm doing more than one PDF, and I'm going to put a scale in there. I know that it's 50 scale, so I'm going to go ahead and put 50 scale in there. And I'm going to go ahead and hit Save. Takes just a second. So what we're going to do is we're going to check it. And there it is. So that looks right. And it looks good. You'll notice again it plotted with my plot styles. So if we zoom in, you know, we're picking up the grays and we're picking up the dark lines and some of the fat lines and things like that. So it looks like that, um, it looks like it worked fine. Uh, one thing you might have noticed in that is the scale, the scale bar. And, um, and the name. Now we didn't cover that in a previous tutorial, so to do that it's quite easy. You just type in the command mtext and select a box and just type in whatever text you want. In this case it's your name, so name. And if it's too small you can do a couple things. You can just scale it. Um, excuse me, let me close this so you can see my command box. You can actually just scale it manually by clicking on your hotkey and you can say I want to scale it. Of course, if you wanted it to be a certain size, you can select it, and then you can say, "Well, I actually want this to be, you know, a quarter of an inch, so 0.25 inches." Um, and then what you've got is now you actually have the um, now you actually can have your text that's going to be a certain size. So a couple different ways to do that. There's um, to, and again, same thing. If you want to change your font, um, there's a little drop down for a Mac anyway. Uh, there's a little drop down you can change the font because I know that the default CAD font's not very exciting. So that's mtext, that's how you can write your name, mtext, name and date. In this case, um, we're going to do a scale too. So um, I'm actually going to change the color of my text just so that it's a little bit easier for you to see. I'm using yellow so that it prints just because that's out of habit. What they are going to do is we're going to make sure that we have a scale bar. We know what our drawing is to scale. When we're printing to scale, we want to make sure that we have a scale bar. Otherwise, why? You know, what's the point? There's no way to know. So in this case, there's a few different ways to do it. You can just you can do a scale any way you want. A real fast way is to use actually what's called a thick poly or to give your polyline a width. So I'm going to type in PL for polyline and it, you'll notice that the the, the width is, is, is t by default zero. I can just type in, it gives me some options. I'm going to type in down here at the bottom, it says W for width. So W asks me what's the starting, starting width. I'm going to say 0 0.5 inches. And what's the ending width? Uh, 0.5 inches. I want it to be the same. So you'll notice now when I'm drawing, in this case, um, it's a little bit fatter than the one I drew, but that's okay. Um, now when I'm drawing a line, it actually has a width. Now, just if I wanted to go back to something thinner, I can just again type in W, 0.25, enter, 0.25, enter. There we go. So that looks a little bit better. I'll use a quarter of an inch for my scale. So now what we can do is we know that, in this case, we know that. Um, one inch equals 50 feet, so that we know a half an inch equals 25 feet. So I can go P line, and I can go 0.25 inches. Um, I'm sorry, one inch equals 50 feet, so that means a half an inch equals 25. So 0.5 inches, 
um, and again I can draw another line and I can do that again 0.5 inches that gets me up to 50 and again I can go one inch and two inches. Now, the only thing I need to do from here is just you know slide some of these down so if I wanted to move this down 0.25 inches I can do that if I wanted to move this down move 0.25 inches. A really fast way to make a scale bar obviously you could go in and you know rectangle and align and stretch and all those things like that. So then all you have to do from there is just use your mtext command again mtext give ourselves a number in this case I'm just going to use x as a placeholder and set that there co for copy multiple one two three and four. Again, just go ahead and fill in, um, fill in those numbers. North arrow, same thing, really easy. Rectangle, rectangle. So type in the rectangle command. D for dimensions. 0.5 enter. 0.5 enter. Gives me a nice little square. It's about the size. It's about the size of my scale. Makes sense, right? So I'm going to draw a line down the middle, just temporarily. It's going to tell me where the center of my square is. Type in C for circle. I'm going to go ahead and draw a circle. In this case, actually, I probably should have drawn my line going the other way, so I'll rotate it. That tells me north is up. Now, north is up in this drawing, so I want to make sure I indicate north is up. Now, if I want to draw a polyline again with a thickness, now, remember, it remembers our thickness from the last time. So it thinks it's, we want it at 0.25 inches. In this case, I actually want to go 0.05 inches. Um, so I have to type in W for width, 0.05 enter, 0.05 enter. So what it's doing is now it's giving me a... Uh, just a, a just a tiny uh, just a little bit of a fatter line. So again, you know, several you can draw a north arrow that looks like whatever you want. You can actually physically draw an arrow. I think something um, something simple is best. So um, so we looked at really quickly. We looked at adding a CTB file. We looked at the plot dialog box and some of the differences between Mac and PC. Uh, we looked at making sure that you have your name and scale on your drawings. And again, if, if you have multiple viewports, if you're doing it this way, uh, you want to make sure that you copy you want to make sure that you copy um, anything onto the other viewport. So again, I'm just copying that, clicking it to the corner so it's in the same place. So we want to make sure that we if you're doing multiple plots, you want to make sure you have your name and scale on each plot. So that's it. What we're going to do real quick, just to make sure that it works, is we're just going to go ahead and plot the aerial. Uh, we've already plotted the line work. I'm just going to type in plot again. So we'll do this twice. Remember, uh, it, it, for a PC, it will, you could say previous settings. What it'll do is it'll actually remember all your previous settings from the first one. The only thing you have to change is the window. Because remember, we're no longer printing on this viewport. If you have multiple viewports, you, of course, just have to window this. I'm going to go back and I'm going to do the same things that I did for the first one, change it to my pen settings, and I'm going to center it on the page so that we're consistent. That's it. Everything else is the same. Same size. Just double check it. Get in the habit of just checking that every time. I'm going to save my PDF. Remember, I'm going to name it something I'll remember. I'll probably call this CAD Aerial. The reason why I'm calling it CAD is because it's coming from CAD. It's not coming from Google Earth. So CAD Aerial 50 scale. I'll go ahead and save that to my desktop. If I check by date modified, there it is. So you notice it's actually quite a large file. It's 40 megabytes, and that's because a couple things is because um, CAD doesn't give you the same image compression control settings. Uh, so depending on your PDF plotter and your compression settings, it might actually be quite high, uh, which means that um, it's compress it's not compressing it, so it's full size. The other thing, of course, is that this is 40, um, this is 36 inches, so 3 feet by 24 by 2 feet. So we're printing a page that's 3 feet by 2 feet with, a, with an image. So um, the CAD line work, you'll notice the CAD file is very small, 43 kilobytes. And the aerial itself is quite large because of, we're plotting an image at a very large size. So again, we're going to double check it, make sure that it worked, my name is on there, the scale is on there. Um, everything appears to have worked okay. So that's good. I'll go ahead and uh, you notice the border. Uh, the border is because the, we, we're plotting on a page that's just two inches larger than the sheet say, size that we set, out, we set up, so that's actually okay. I'm not too concerned about that. So let's just go ahead and make sure that we covered everything. Um, again, we looked at pen styles. 
We looked at um, creating a viewport, multiple viewports, freezing layers inside of the viewport. Again, you may want to double check to make sure your viewport is locked when you're doing that, just so that you don't accidentally zoom in and out. So we can freeze, we can toggle layers on and off um, independently of the different viewports. And um, we plotted with Mac and PC, and we verified that our PDF um, worked correctly, and we looked at the sizes of them. So again, always, always, always open your PDF, make sure it looked okay um, before you close or quit or anything like that so that, um, so that you can just make those changes if it's not right, make those changes and plot it again. So that's it, plotting in AutoCAD, uh, lots of fun, very important. Uh, once you get this right, uh, it's going to help you in lots of different, lots of different things. Thank you very much.